Hey Potters, this video is going to teach you how to do an underglaze transfer. Here's one that's already been through the bisque. So this is my bucket series. So this was on paper, um, underglaze transferred. So this is a really cool technique. You can do your own drawings, um, put them in a photocopier, and then uh, use it for an underglaze transfer. So let me show you how that works. Find shapes, um, print them out. You could do your own drawing and we can run it through the printer. The key is, is that you wanna have the toner, this black ink from the printer. Um, and let me show you what happens. So I have my underglaze here. I'm gonna kind of load up my brush and look at like, even if I go right over that black, see how it just resists the underglaze? So when you're doing this, you wanna kind of, you know, you need a, an equivalent of three coats on here, but it usually you can lay it on pretty thick. Do you guys see that? Isn't that like magical? Oh my gosh, I love it. But if you do anything with words on it, make sure that you reverse the image um, and you just do that in, in Word, you can just drag um, the side, one of the sides of the picture over and it will reverse it for you. Look what happens here. I'm getting my underglaze and the underglaze just stays in all these shapes. I can even go right over this C and it doesn't cover it up. Now you can make these, um, like you could spend a couple days just painting, underglazing your transfers. You don't have to use them right away. These are going to dry. And then once they're dry, they just wait until you're ready with your pot to transfer them. Now, when I'm doing really small areas like this that are right next to each other and the line thickness is thinner, I like to skip, let the, like, so I'm skipping this spot and then I'm gonna let this dry before I go in and fill the other one in. If I did it at the same time, they would kind of bleed together because that line is so thin. That is something to keep in mind when you're making them. Um, you know, I, really what works the best, like this is a six point line. I feel like that um, really holds the, the underglaze. These get a little bit touch and go. Um, also when you're going over words like this, um, let's see, I'll have to pick a color that you can see. You can still go over them, but I kind of just like dab it on instead of rub it. Sometimes if you rub it or if you rub it too much, it will cover up the letter. So use a brush that's a, appropriate for the space that you're working in. Um, if it's a small space, smaller brush. Again, I don't go over this three times with underglaze because you'll see once you start doing it, it kind of like puddles. Um, but you just want to keep in mind you want to have about the equivalent of three brush strokes, um, even though you're not actually doing it three times. So here's what it looks like when it's all finished. Now I'm gonna let this dry and get ready to transfer it on a pot. So potters, here we have a leather dry pot. Um, you know, I can't bend the rim. It doesn't come off on my hands, but it's still cold to the touch. You can still feel that there is moisture in it. I usually do this kind of in my lap, um, but you could use a pillow um, or your towel or something. And then here's the transfer that I'm going to be transferring on. Now, you're gonna take water in a spray bottle and you're gonna spray the back side of this transfer. And then you're gonna let that sit and soak in. And I actually like to spray just maybe once on the actual underglaze side. Then I'm gonna set that aside and just kind of let it soak in. And what that does is release the underglaze from the paper so that it will transfer onto your pot. There's a lot of opportunities for refinement here, depending on like how much underglaze you put on, how much water you spray on, how dry your pot is. So it's definitely something that you want to just keep working with. So I'm going to try to apply this middle part first so that I can rub the transfer out 
from the middle to prevent getting air bubbles in my transfer. Doesn't always work, but I think it helps. So again, starting in the middle and rubbing this way. And then to transfer it, you just kind of start rubbing. I might decide it needs a little bit more water. You can also kind of dab it with a sponge or rub it with a damp sponge. You just have to be careful if you're doing this that the paper doesn't just start rubbing off. And what's nice about this process is that you can actually lift it up and see if it started to transfer. So you can see I have a little, some spots that aren't transferred yet. I'm gonna rub it a little bit more. Although I, I embrace those little spots. I think it looks um, cool. I think it looks like it's vintage or old. So again, this is not soaking wet. Again, this image was reversed so that when it goes on the pot, you can read the words. So here we go. Oh, I see a pretty big spot there that didn't transfer. I'm just gonna flip that back over and rub it. See if I can get it to connect. Some more down here. So now I'm just using my finger, really rubbing that. Sometimes you can use like a back of a spoon. That helps. There you go. Not too bad. I have a little bit of underglaze sticking up here, so I'm just gonna kind of tap that down. Um, but a nice, cool, kind of vintage look. You can make um, really anything that you want um, and transfer it onto your pot. So give it a try.